Welcome to Educator.com. This is the Calculus 1 series, and we're going to take a look at the limit definition of the derivative. So here we've stated three different versions for the limit definition of the derivative. Formulas 1 and 2 both give us the derivative evaluated at a point x equals a. And so we see that f prime of a can be computed as limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. The same derivative evaluated at a, f prime of a, can be evaluated as limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. And we'll try out both these formulas on the same example and we'll see that of course we'll get the same result. And then finally, formula 3 is a version of formula 1 but giving us the derivative function instead of the derivative at a point. So let's get started using these formulas. So in this first example, we would like to compute the derivative of f of x equals x squared using formula 1. And let's evaluate this derivative at an a value, a equals 5. And let me just um, write that over here for reference. OK, so we'll use a equals 5, and we'll evaluate f prime of 5. So f prime of 5 will equal the limit as h approaches 0 of the fraction. Now in the numerator of the fraction, we need f of a plus h. a is 5, so we're looking at f of 5 plus h. f of x is x squared, and so f of 5 plus h is 5 plus h quantity squared. So I'll put 5 plus h quantity squared in place of f of a plus h. f of a is f of 5, and so we get 5 squared. And our denominator is just h. And once you have the correct setup like we do here, your job becomes simply simplifying the fraction and then carrying out the limit as h approaches 0. So let's begin working on all of that. So we will have the limit as h approaches 0 of this fraction, let's start by expanding out 5 plus h quantity squared. And so we will have 25 plus 10h plus h squared, and then minus the 5 squared, so minus 25. And this whole numerator is set over h. Now at this point, if we've done things correctly, which we have here, um, terms without factors of h should drop out. And notice that we have a 25 minus 25. And so those terms in which h don't appear, doesn't appear, those terms really are dropping out. And so our numerator now will look like 10 plus h, sorry, 10 times h plus h squared all over h. And again, the 25 minus 25 dropped out. And I'll go ahead and just show those dropping out. And so now let's continue on simplifying this fraction. Notice that in the numerator, each term has a factor of h in it. So we can go ahead and divide each term through by h. And so continuing on, we will have the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, 10 over h 10 times h over h becomes 10, and h squared over h becomes h. And now we take the limit as h approaches 0 of 10 plus h, and we get 10. And so our final conclusion here is that for the function f of x equals x squared, f prime of 5 is working out to 10. And again, that is our final result here on this first example. And so let's look at the same function evaluated um, for its derivative at the same point, but let's look at using formula 2. So here again is an alternative formula for computing the same derivative. I'm again going to let a equal 5, and so we're going to be computing f prime of 5, but by this very different looking formula to give us the same result. Okay, so getting started, we're working on computing f prime of 5, and we will have the limit 
as x approaches a, where a is 5, so the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x minus f of a, well, f of x is x squared, a is 5, and so f of 5 here is 5 squared, or 25, divided by x minus a, so we're dividing by x minus 5. Now our job is to simplify this fraction and then take the limit as x approaches 5. So again, we have the limit as x approaches 5, and now we do whatever algebra we can think of to simplify this fraction. And here, notice that x squared minus 25 is a difference of squares, and so we can factor it as x plus 5 times x minus 5, and then our denominator still is x minus 5. And now there's good news, the x minus 5's cancel. And so let's go ahead and cancel those factors of x minus 5. And let's see what we have left. So we have left the limit as x approaches 5 of, well, all that's left is x plus 5. And as x approaches 5, x plus 5, of course, approaches 10. And so once again, our value for f prime of 5 is working out to 10. And so again, just stating our conclusion again here, we have again found that f prime of 5 is 10 for the function f of x equals x squared. Again, that's the same result we got in example 1. We're simply using a different formulation for the limit definition of the derivative. So in the next example,